हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अजीत जायसवाल फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी पाण्डिचेरी सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी पुडुचेरी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल इन टाइटल डिटरमाइनिंग एवोल्यूशनरी रिलेशनशिप अंडर पेपर फिजिकल एंड बायोलॉजिकल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस मॉड्यूल लेट्स ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न फ्रॉम दिस मॉड्यूल as this module focuses a important concept like basic concept of evolution this modules also study the differences are enables a student of post graduate level to understand how evolution has occurred and what are the evidences that we have related to evolution it also discuss about the important concept of embryology paleontology taxonomy physiology and genetics so what is import what is evolution <clears throat> the important question that arises in our mind what is evolution how it occurs and how from where we came to know that there is some evolution there is some process what is what we call it what we, what we call it as a evolution biological evolution is a genetic change in a population from one generation to another the speed and direction of this change is always variable with different aspect of lines and different times but continuous evolution over many generation can result in the development of new varieties and species likewise the failure to evolve in response to environmental change can and often lead to even extinction or total loss when scientists speak of evolution as a theory they do not mean that it is mere a speculation most people would consider them such a fundamental theory to be sufficiently tested by empirical evidence to conclude that they are indeed fact as a result of massive amount of evidences that we have for evolution accumulated of accumulated over a last two century we can safely conclude that evolution has occurred and it continue to occur all life form including people evolved from earlier species and are continue to evolve even till today we are now understand that there are number of different natural processes that can cause evolution to occur how do we know that the evolution has occurred there is a number of evidence that support that there is some evolutionary process that has occurred the evidences for evolution has primarily correlated with the fossil record of changes in earlier fossil the next important thing is the climate the chemical and anatomical changes as similarities of related life form we have also evidences from geographic and distrib geographical distribution of related species we have a also evidence from a recorded genetic changes in the living organism over many generation the most convincing evidence for the occurrence of descent with modification or evolution came from either from morphological and comparative anatomical changes or from embryological evolutionary informations or from the fossil like evidences that is from paleontology even we'll get lot of evidences from the taxonomic classification given by linnaeus we too have direct evidence from the geographical distribution based on the comparison as well as the differences in the climatic as well as the flora and fauna we too have a convincing evidence from biochemistry and physiology that to comparative physiology anatomical changes between the invertebrates vertebrate later mammalians ultimately primates until modern human we also have a convincing evidence for the occurrence of a descent with modification come from a highly developed specialized recent subject that is genetics evidences from morphology and comparative anatomy morphological studies of various organ system of vertebrates indicate that these are constructed on the same basic plan the minor differences seen in some form are 
the adoptive modification to the diverse mode of living. This similarity is known as homology. Homology is the similarity among organs of different animals based on a common origin. However, the structure might took, look different and the function would vary from one organist to the other. Homology is seen in every organ system from fishes to man, like homology in the limb structure of vertebrae, homology in the brain structure. When we discuss about the homology in the limb structure of vertebrates, the modification include shortening or lengthening of bone, variation in shape, and reduction in the number of bones or fusion of bones in accordance with the function. From the study of four limbs of various animals, it becomes evident that these vertebrates must have had a common ancestor with prototype of four limb. Homology in the brain structure ranging from feces to mammal, the brain consists of a similar series of parts like olfactory lobe, cerebral hemisphere, optic lobe, cerebellum, medulla oblongata, etc. As we progress through the series from feces to mammals, some lobes present gradual enlargement that is cerebral hemisphere. In fishes, the cerebral hemisphere are even smaller than the optic lobe. But in mammals, these are so much enlarged that they hide the olfactory lobe in front and the optic lobe behind. Now let's discuss about the vestigial organs. The vestigial or rudimentary organs are the useless remnants of structure or organs which might have been large and functional in the ancestor. These are often undersized, degenerate and non-functional. Man alone possessed nearly 100 such vestigial structure like a vermiform appendix which is the remnant of cecum muscle of external ear, nictitating membrane or plica semilunaris, vestigial tail vertebrae, wisdom teeth, and lobe of the ear. We have also evidence from the atavism or reversion. Atavism or reversion is the appearance or reappearance of those ancestral characteristics in an organism or in a group of organisms which do not occur normally or which represent the reminiscent of normal structure. Such abnormal structure are known as atavism, atavistic character of reversion or atavism. Atavism of course not very common in well illustrated by numerous examples like Cervical fissure in man, presence of tail in some, mammary gland, hairs on the body and face in Irish dog man. Evidences from embryology. Ernst Haeckel was much impressed by observing a generalized pattern of development and the general resemblance between the embryos of different group of animals. Haeckel formulated the theory called as recapsulation theory or biogenetic law. It says ontogeny recapsulates phylogeny. Ontogeny is the life history of the individual starting from ovum. And a phylogeny is the series of adult ancestors of the individual which must have incurred in the evolution of the group of these individuals. It means that an individual during its development brief 
has its ancestral history. Von Baer's principle of embryonic differentiation constitute a better guide to embryological evidence for evolution. These principles are as follows. First principle says that general characteristics appear in the development before specialized characters. Second principle says that from the more general, the less general and finally the specialized character appears. Third principle says that an animal during development departs progressively from the form of other animal. Fourth principle says that young stage of an animal do not resemble to the adult of different groups but with their embryo. Evidences from Paleontology Evidences in support of evolution discussed so far are of circumstantial nature. But the first direct evidence comes from the study of fossil. The term fossil refers not only to the bones, teeth and other hard parts of animal or plant body, but to any impression or imprint left by some previous organism in the soft mud, which subsequently hardened are the molds and cast of entire organism of the soft animal preserved is, is, is some other way. Mostly fossils are found in the sedimentary rocks which are formed by the deposition of sand or mud on the bottom of lake or sea. Entire bodies are part of the dead or dead organism, become covered by sand dispute. After their burial, most animals rot away without leaving any sign of their existence. But sometimes, this deposit provides anaerobic situation required for fossil formation. Even under this condition, soft part decay, leaving only the hard parts like bones, scales, cell, etc. In animals and wood or leaf skeleton in plants, slowly over the centuries, the material of the hard part is replaced molecule by molecule with mineral matter from the surrounding mud. The replacement is sometimes so accurate that even the cellular detail can be studied accurately. Within a thousands and millions of years, layers of mud shrink and hardens into rock. Let's discuss about the limitation of paleontologists. First, rare chance of fossilization. Second, often it is frequently distorted by pressure or fracture. Third, the evidence is restricted to the details of skeletal feature and teeth and one can only draw inferences about the soft part that is convocational pattern of the brain is always based on the cost of skull fourth difficulty of interpretation even when rich and more or less complete fossil record is available this happens when one has some evidence of the earlier representative of an evolutionary line which has not yet developed the distinguishing taxonomic characteristics. This will be clear by the consideration of a spastic situation. Next one, difficulty of correctly dating the fossil material both in absolute and relative term. And the last limitation is differences in rates of uh, somatic evolution which must be taken into account while selecting characters for their economic relevance in the assessment of phylogenetic status of the fossil types. Evidences from Taxonomy The science of naming, describing and classifying organisms is known as taxonomy. Classification started as an artificial system of cataloging of innumerable living organisms. As a librarian classify and catalog books, it developed into a natural system based upon natural affinities and actual kinship found in the organism. It was devised by Linleos. It is therefore concluded that Resemblance in animals are because these have arisen from a common stock and differences in them are chiefly due to 
adaptation to different types of environment. Taxonomists have summarized their studies in the form of tree-like diagram in which phyla represent major branch of the tree of life. These are divided into several small branches or classes which are divided into orders. This taxonomic tree with its branching system like a real tree represent an interrelationship among group of organisms descendant from a common ancestor and modified along different lines. The living organisms constitute the terminal twigs of the phylogenetic tree and do not exhibit any direct relationship. The natural system of classification is based upon similarities and such similarities of structure could be only due to an origin from common ancestors. Now let's discuss about the evidences from the connecting link. There is a number of species which contain the features of a more than one species like viruses. They contain the feature of living as well as non-living characteristics. Archaeopteryx which has a which have a, some of the reptilian characteristics and also birds like characteristics. So while classifying animal one came across a certain animal or a small animal group which exhibit certain characteristic which, which is more than one group. We can call such group such group of animal as a as a in connecting link because of their dual classification or dual characteristic features. As we have seen in the case of viruses, they have a several characteristics based on that we can call the viruses as a non-living creature. Similarly, it contains some of the features based on that we can call it as a, as a living creature also. There is a number of evidence in support of not only just virus and archaeopteryx, there are number of other animals or mammals, even in mammals, one group of mammal which are known to be egg-laying mammal, example prototheria, they are act as a connecting link between the reptile, reptiles and mammals. Because egg-laying characteristic is of reptiles, not of mammals. Most of the mammals are viviparous, they gave birth to the young one. But Prototheria is the only mammal which gave the egg. Because of this specific characteristics, it act as a evolutionary in between between the reptiles and mammals. Similarly, Archaeopteryx. Generally, birds can mostly contain beaks and their teeth is altogether lacking. But in the case of Archaeopteryx, we have seen a bird-like character and a reptilian characteristic. The presence of teeth instead of beak is a altogether a reptilian characteristics which is mostly absent in the birds. So Archaeopteryx has can be called as a called as a primitive reptiles or, or, or what you call as a primitive or advanced reptile and primitive birds. Similarly Prototherian can be called as a advanced reptiles or primitive mammal because of this this Connecting information are dual characteristics, they are called as a connecting link and they provide a enough evidence of evolution. Evidences from geographic distribution. Distribution of animals and plant in space on earth's surface constitute another convincing evidence of evolution. The distribution of animal drew Darwin's attention to the possibilities of the origin of species by evolution or descent with modification. The most important of them is the discontinuous distribution like diversity in flora and fauna, discontinuous distribution of closely related species, diversity in flora and fauna we have seen in many countries which are very near to each other have similar climatic conditions but they differ in the flora and fauna. For example, 
Madagascar is only 260 miles from east coast of Africa, but its inhabitants are markedly different. Similarly, the climate of Australia, South Africa and Western South America is very much the same, but the fauna and the flora in each region are strikingly different. However, the, we can see the similar response in the case of fauna of North Africa and Southern Europe, which are widely separated by Mediterranean Sea is much more identical than in the above cases. In the case of discontinuous distribution of closely related species, in some cases closely related species exist in widely separated places with no representative in the intermediate territory. For example, tapir are found in the tropical America and Mal Malayalam Iceland. The camel it occur in Asia while their nearest allies, llamas are found in South America. This uneven distribution of animal can easily be explained on the basis of organic evolution. Evidences from Biochemistry and Physiology The most convincing evidence of descent from common ancestors comes from the similarities in the biochemical composition and physiological activities of organism like protoplasm. The chemical composition of all being is reduced to four main chemicals element namely carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. In the case of chromosomes, the essential component of nucleus in every living cell are the chromosomes. The chromosomes have a fairly constant chemical composition in the living animal. The chemical composition of DNA is basically the same in all living beings. In the case of genetic code, it is surprising to note that the same genetic code having triplet codon is found from virus to man, whereas hemoglobin is a conjugated protein it is formed of two identical alpha chain and two identical beta chain in almost all group. Cytochrome C, which is a respiratory pigment present in all eukaryotic cell, it forms a part of the electron transport system and in all eukaryotes. Similarly, we can see the similarity in insulin, enzymes and hormones. Enzymes and hormones in the same manner similar or identical enzymes and hormones are found in large number of animal group. The information of comparative serology shows that the body fluid and tissue also plays an important role in providing evidence for the relationship among organisms. So the protoplasm, chromosome, genetic code hemoglobin, cytochrome C, insulin, enzymes and hormones and comparative serology gave a clear cut evidence of evolution from biochemistry and physiology. Evidences from genetics. The final line of evidence from evolution is drawn from genetics, which is known as the science of heredity. It has been established now that genes which is known as the heredity determiners are quite constant and are inherited unchanged generation after generation but genes undergo change producing mutation and validations this change gene determine the character in a different direction than the original the natural force of isolation and natural selection operate on these mutation. The selection and breeding of domesticated animal and cultivated plant for the past several thousands years provide models as to how some evolutionary forces operate in nature. Organisms change with the ever-changing 
environment and many of these variations are heritable. Mutation always affect their genetic makeup leading to the development of new characteristics. Some of these modifications are beneficial to the organism in question. By selecting and interbreeding these selected varieties, new races have been established by man. The same selection and interbreeding might have occurred and may be occurring on large scale in nature and thus would have established new species. Now student, let's try to revise some of the important points that we discussed in this module. I have already told you that biological evolution is a genetic change in a population from one generation to another. When scientists speak of evolution as a theory, they do not mean that it is mere speculation. Charles Darwin modified his religious belief as did many others. As a result of the discovery of convincing proof of evolution through his theory called as theory of natural selection, the theory of organic evolution appears most plausible explanation for the occurrence of varied form of plant and animal on the earth. The convincing evidences for the occurrence of descent with modification, modification came from morphological comparative anatomy, embryology, paleontology, taxonomy, geographic distribution, biochemistry and comparative physiology and genetics. Homology is seen in every organ system for, from fish to more man. The vestigial or rudimentary organ which once used to be functional in nature are, are known to be the useless remnant of structure or the organs which might have been large functional in ancestor because of number of different habit, maybe because of the food habit, maybe because of some other reasons. Similarly, we have evidence from atavism or we what we call it reversion or reappearance of those ancestral character in an organism. Ernst Haeckel also gave a recapitulation theory or biogenetic law in order to prove the concept of ontogeny re recapitulate phylogeny. We have a evidence in support of evolution discussed so far on circumstantial nature, but the direct evidence came from the study of fossil that we discovered from different sites. The science of naming, <coughs> describing and classifying organisms is known as taxonomy. This also gave a clear cut information about the, the, about the evolution. While classifying animal, one came across certain animals or a small group of animal which are similar in some characteristics of more than one group. Such animal groups are called as correct connecting link. But there are certain groups which are altogether far away from, from each other and they are clubbed into separate species or separate groups. Distribution of animal and plant in space of the earth surface, they constitute another convincing evidence of evolution, what we call geographical distribution. Even the convincing, most convincing evidence of descent from common ancestor came from a similarities in the biochemical composition and physiological activities of the organism. And the final, the final line of evidence are the most direct one, most clear one evidences come from, drawn from genetics, what is called as science of heredity. Thank you.